Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here discussing some more Warhammer combat cards. Continuing the series, taking a look at some of Mad Imp's top tier deck lists, and we'll be focusing on the Servants of the Emperor faction here. Once again, assuming all cards available at at least trait rank 3 or above, and uh, 200 point decks for each of these. So we'll take a look at the Warlords one by one, starting with Commissar Yarik. So for Yarik, you don't necessarily have to go ranged, but that seems to be the most popular and effective build. Uh, I personally like just running a bunch of Astro Militarum tanks and infantry, uh, but here we actually see uh, quite a few different cards, a lot of them much newer cards uh, that I personally don't have at a very high level, uh, but that do the job much better than uh, some of the older cards. So uh, first of all, the cards that you do want, uh, obviously, are the two infantry with Endless, uh, those combo really well with the uh, Yarek special rule, allowing you to get more ranged buffs to your units. You do have to make sure that all of the cards in your deck do buff ranged. So we see everything in here except for the one four point healer, uh, which is just in there, of course, to to increase the health of your strongest cards, uh, and you'll get a lot of value out of that at th at these levels for sure. Uh, as for the damage dealers, we've got the 72 point Rogel Dorn battle tank, which is uh, incredibly powerful. It's got barrage and precision shot as a secondary trait, massive amount of health. It's just going to be dealing a blistering amount of damage. And then underneath it on the second row at 38 points, that's actually a pretty new card there, but that is the Sor Sororitas Exorcist, which uh, is basically just a better version of the Basilisk. It's just under 40 points, so it doesn't take extra damage for big game hunters, but also has barrage and precision shot. Just a really powerful card. Uh, to the left of that is the 16 point Sidonian Scatros, which is basically just a cheaper version of the Vindicare Assassin. It has target acquired and precision shot, uh, so really great card there. And then uh, the 33 point uh, Admet card there is the uh, Bellistarius, which is uh, quite strong as well for its cost. It has pre precision shot as its main trait, and then ranged scout as the secondary. And then finally, we've got. Uh, Commissar Severina Rain, who has Inspiring Presence and Outflank, and uh, very good stats for 12 points. In fact, she's probably like the, one of the most cost-efficient cards in the game. So overall, very solid deck here, just consistently able to deal lots of range damage every turn. Next up, we have Ursacar E. Creed, who, much like Lelith, Hesperax is able to return cards back to your hand, but it occurs whenever one of your cards dies. So again, uh, you'll want to include an uh, Endless card. This deck only has one, uh, the four-point uh, little Cadian Trooper there. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We, we have some of the same cards as before. We've got the, the Rogel Dorn again, the Bellistarius. With Creed, you'll want to include traits that uh, activate on deployment. So uh, specifically, the Precision Shot on those two cards. And also on the 36-point uh, Vindicare Assassin, that's uh, kind of a newer one. Uh, but that one has a strong precision shot as well, I believe. Uh, same goes for the 6-point Rogue Trader. And then uh, the 12-point Admet card there is the Techno Archaeologist, another new one. That one has Medicaid and Outflank. So, of course, if you have it at level 9, getting both of those uh, potentially multiple times uh, is an amazing amount of value. And then finally, uh, uh, we've got the 8-point Teraxi Sterilizer with Outflank, which... I wonder if there's a better uh, choice than that one. Uh, that card I don't think actually has very good stats, uh, so I don't really use it myself. Uh, we've also got the 5 point Crusader with Taunt, and yeah, I've definitely seen Taunt used with the uh, Creed decks. Of course, it protects your bigger units and guarantees that that card uh, will die first, allowing you to redeploy those uh, more expensive cards, so uh, definitely a very powerful card in this deck. Keeping track of which cards have been deployed and where to deploy them each time uh, can be a little bit tricky. And I'm not a big fan of the slower playstyle that Creed has, but his special rule is definitely very powerful and there's a reason he got banned from PvP. Next up is Inquisitor Greyfax, who for a long time enjoyed uh, being the strongest warlord in the game by a good margin, I think. It's just a really powerful special rule that could work with all kinds of different builds. Uh, but more recently, she got nerfed pretty drastically and is nowhere near as strong as she was before, especially in ranked mode. Uh, so for this deck, we have just a bunch of cheap cards uh, with an overall 90 points remaining left in the deck, which would give you a 45% boost to the stats of all the cards in the deck. Uh, so we got two legendaries here. Severina Rain is, of course, uh, as a cheap uh, but still very solid uh, legendary. Great choice. 
Uh, we've also got Curtis Hicks, who is an amazingly powerful melee uh, unit. Just a ridiculously strong, uh, furious charge and uh, big game hunter attack, uh, especially at this level. Uh, then we've got Inquisitor Koteaz, who is a powerful psyker with Sinic Blast and now has anti-infantry as his secondary trait. Uh, but of course, yeah, he's going to be doing a lot more damage uh, with Greyfax. And then two cheap cards uh, to finish off the deck, uh, the five-point Crusader Taunt, and then the four-point Repentia with Deathblow. But overall, I, I don't think this deck is going to be the most competitive. Um, of course, at these levels, you'll be doing plenty of damage, but I don't know if the 45% boost to the health will be enough staying power for this deck to survive uh, at the top tiers. Moving on to Canoness Viridian, who has a powerful special rule that uh, combos well with the melee cards. Uh, so we've got three legendaries in here. Uh, once again, Curtis Hicks is an obvious choice. Uh, we got Celestine, who recently got a bit of a nerf to her health, but still uh, definitely a very tanky card with uh, Endless, allowing her to come back, uh, that inspiring presence, and she has a solid ranged as well as uh, melee attack. Got Iron Hand Strachan as well, who's an interesting one. Uh, at the higher levels, he can be quite tanky. He's got Regeneration and Berserk, so he could potentially get a really massive uh, boost to both his ranged and uh, melee attacks. And then we've got a few support cards. Uh, I personally don't really like running the um, Endless Infantry because uh, they have a very weak uh, melee attack. And uh, yeah, if they are the ones that get the attack, then they're not going to be doing very much damage. But uh, we do have the one Cadian Trooper in there. Uh, we've got the five point guy with Taunt, which uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, we've got another card with Taunt, actually, the uh, 11 point Gemini Superior, uh, which I think would work decently well here. Uh, Leon Valerian uh, got a pretty good boost to the stats uh, recently, so uh, another card with the Inspiring Presence and Furious Charge for the secondary trait, so yeah, good card there. And then finally, the Eversaur Assassin, who now has uh, Berserk and Anti-Infantry for uh, its secondary trait, which that one, I think it was better when it had Deathblow for the secondary trait, so um, not really a big fan of that one now. So it wouldn't be the best choice for me. I think currently I'm just running the Penitent Engine and I've got a few other cheap support cards like the little dog with Melee Scout and then the 4 point healer. Uh, so that's what I'm running with the Canon S. Next up is Morvin Vol, and we have a total of 5 legendaries in this deck including the Warlord herself who is quite powerful. She has really good stats and Spring Presence and Fear and solid attack stats. Um, Again, we've got Celestine and uh, Curtis Hicks, as well as Iron Hand Strachan, who I think would perform better in this deck because uh, with that special rule, it does reduce the damage uh, de by dealt by the first three attacks. So you'd get more potentially out of the Berserk on Strachan here than you would with the uh, Canoness Viridian. Then we got the bodyguard version of Belisarius Call, who has Medicaid and Regeneration. Uh, just very powerful ranged and melee attack stats on that card when you've got it at a high level. At the lower levels, he's pretty garbage, but uh, yeah, at this level, he's going to be doing some solid damage. And then you can heal them even more with that four point healer, uh, as well as protect them with the Gemini Superior with Taunt. So, uh, yeah, I guess if you want to see the special rule activate the most times, you'd want to fill up all eight slots. But I think uh, as long as you have some powerful legendary bodyguards like the ones here. I think this deck would perform pretty well, with the flexibility of being able to go either ranged or melee most of the time. And then we have finally the uh, weakest Servants of the Emperor Warlord, Magos Dominus Ivosnophon, who just uh, increases the health of your deployed cards by 20 anytime one of your friendly cards is destroyed. Uh, so for him, obviously you do want the, those cheap cards with Endless uh, for that extra healing. Again we got the 11 point card with Taunt. The 6 point healer with Medicaid, who we've seen for the first time here. And again, many of the same bodyguards, Celestine, Iron Hand Strachan, and then uh, Belisarius Call, the bodyguard. As well as Trajan Valoris we're seeing for the first time. He's got uh, Furious Charge for his primary trait and then Inspiring Presence for the secondary. Uh, he does deal quite a bit of damage. Actually, I'm currently using him within my Canoness Viridian deck. Uh, so, some interesting choices here. A little bit uh, higher melee overall than ranged attacks, but uh, yeah, 
Uh, I, if you're really wanting to, to go far in ranked, I would not recommend using uh, this Warlord. He can be quite annoying to face, though, uh, when he comes up in the campaign. Just getting through all that extra health uh, takes a little bit of a while, but uh, yeah, I think most of the other Servants of the Emperor Warlords have much more powerful special rules. So that is it for Servants of the Emperor. Let me know what you think of these decks, if you agree or disagree with the bodyguard choices, and if you found any other builds that work really well with any of these warlords, let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.